After his death, Jesus appeared to his disciples over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. What an amazing time that must have been for the disciples. But then it ended. After 40 days, Jesus left them when he ascended, as we read in Acts chapter 1. That would be, Ascension Day would be last Thursday, 40 days after Easter, which makes today, the seventh Sunday after Easter, Ascension Sunday. The biblical doctrine of Jesus' ascension well, it might seem obscure to people today. We, we rarely focus on it, even though it's important enough to rate a line in the Apostles' Creed. Does Jesus' ascension still have any meaning? Does it still mean anything for us? Especially as we're struggling these days through the era of the coronavirus. Well, I suggest this doctrine does indeed teach us spiritual lessons very relevant to this moment we live in, to these struggles with the virus. In this message, we'll cover three, three topics pertaining to Jesus's ascension. What Jesus's ascension means first for Jesus, second, what his ascension means for us, and third, what it means for everything else, that is, the rest of the world around us. Go straight on to our first topic. What does Jesus' ascension mean for Jesus? It means his human body now resides in heaven. The Son of God has become the Son of Man. And as the Son of Man, he will return one day to judge the world, as the Old Testament prophet Daniel spoke of. Jesus' ascension makes him that final judge. So that's one thing Jesus' ascension means for Jesus. More. Jesus' final prayer recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 17, describes another benefit he gained from his ascension. Jesus prayed, Father, Glorify me in your presence with the glory I had before the world began. As a result, Jesus is exalted over all creation. He has ascended on high. God the Father highly exalted him, giving him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, everyone, every created being should kneel as we'll read in our Affirmation of Faith from Philippians chapter 2. In other words, Jesus sits on the throne of heaven at his Father's side. Now, in modern America, the word throne isn't really part of our conceptual apparatus. Sure, we know the word throne. We've seen pictures of thrones, but thrones... The word throne means something more than being a really big and comfortable chair. A throne is a seat of power and authority, a place of authority where a king or queen rules or reigns. All things in a kingdom submit to the throne or else they rebel against it. So it is with the throne of heaven. Creation mostly submits, but we sinners, we live in rebellion against the throne of God. In Acts chapter 1, the angels say, This same Jesus, in that body that rose from the grave, that same Jesus who is taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way that you saw him go. And when he does return, in accord with prophecies in both the Old and New Testaments, Jesus will restore all things to submission to the throne of heaven. That leaves nothing beyond God's control. Nothing 
including viruses. The ascended Jesus reigns over the coronavirus. That microbe, it did not knock Jesus off the throne of heaven. You can rest assured about that. Christ's reign means the world is not gone, has not gone out of control. God has determined some good goal for this coronavirus. Now, it's way beyond my pay grade to speak definitively about God's purposes here. But we, we can easily observe how the lockdown and the virus's death toll focus people on things other than career, other than how to make and spend more money. And this is a good thing. Many good things may result from our tragic, our current tragic time. Learning to look beyond ourselves. This is only one good thing. Learning to look beyond ourselves, learning to, to see suffering in others. Learning to recognize courage, the courage of caregivers who risk their health at this time. Finally, the ascension means for Jesus that he has work to do in heaven. He's not on vacation. He's not resting. Jesus is in charge of God's creation, ruling and reigning in order to achieve the ultimate goals God established before the world was created. As we learn from reading John chapter 14, Jesus left this world. <clears throat> he ascended to his father where he is now busy, busy preparing a place for us. Beyond these tasks, Jesus has a new position in his father's, at his father's side. There's something new he's doing that wasn't happening before. It's a task very important to Jesus. He intercedes for his people, everyone who believes in his name. Jesus has some unique qualifications here. He has some unique qualifications to be our supreme intercessor. As the only begotten Son of God, Jesus, and no one else, fully knows the Father's heart. Perfectly knowing his Father's will, he directly communicates our needs. Jesus is God the Son, so of course, by nature, he has unique access to the Father, making him uniquely supreme as intercessor, but more, yet more. Because Jesus is also human, remember, the ascension to Jesus was in the same body he lived and rose, he lived, died, and rose from the grave in. Grave in. Remember that Jesus ascended into heaven in his full humanity, body and all. He knows not only God, from the inside, he also knows us from the inside. He knows humanity from the inside because he is now, by nature, both divine and human. We need to hear this beautiful spiritual truth. It must be reaffirmed at a time like this when fear and death appear before us with great power and with deeply evil intent against us. We need to know that on the very throne of heaven, our needs, our sorrows, our pains receive attention. They are brought to the attention of the Father Almighty directly from his very own Son. Who could be a better intercessor to pray for us. 
but the Son of God who also has felt the same needs, sorrows, and pains that we feel because he lived a fully human life. Now, with the combination of divine wisdom and real human experience, Jesus intercedes for us perfectly, asking the Father for what most benefits us, it benefits us today, but what most benefits us forever, for it's for our eternal benefit. Jesus sees not just an immediate need, he sees a need that we will have a billion years from now in heaven. And he does the best, the very best for us. Our supreme interests are guarded by Jesus in heaven and made known to his Father. That's what ascension means for Jesus. The first of three topics today. For our second topic, we ask, what does Jesus' ascension mean for us? We already have some hints. It means Jesus continually prays, he intercedes for us. We just talked about that. And the wonderful spiritual truth that we have an advocate devoted to our well-being, seated on the throne of heaven, the place, the seat of all power. This is great news. But we're, we're going to turn our focus now to two additional benefits we receive from Jesus' ascension. It gives us purpose, mission, and power in this life. Also, it benefits our eternal destiny. We receive eternal glory directly through the human body of the ascended Jesus. Well, let's unpack, let's open and unpack these two types of benefits. Regarding his life, Jesus' last words, very final words of Jesus to his followers before departing for heaven, state our mission in the world. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It's a good verse to memorize. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses from here in Jerusalem out to the, the ends of the earth. Jesus promises to share divine power with us. But now, because this is because of his crucifixion, Jesus teaches us a new way of power. This is a different type of power. This is the way of power, the type of power that God uses. This power, this way of power, of God's power, comes through weakness, it even comes through suffering. And famously, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us what he learned about power through illness. Jesus' power, Paul wrote, is made perfect in our weakness by our suffering. Coronavirus reminds us just how weak and frail we are how desperately we need this new form of power. This is another good thing to emerge from our experience of the virus. We learn not to trust our technology, <coughs> not to, to rest on it, not to look to our technology as our savior. Despite all of our technical and economic power, which is really pretty grand, pretty amazing, despite all this technical and economic power, we discover, because of this virus, we have discovered we are not in control of this world. We can't even stop a microscopic virus. It lays waste to human lungs, to the world economy. But Jesus, he sits on the throne of heaven. We may not be in control of this world, but Jesus, he is at the seat of all power. And that is the world's true control center. The fact that the crucified Jesus holds divine power means 
in our mission as his followers, we must express power. We must use power, not as the world does, but in Jesus' way. This is how we act with, through, the crucified and risen, risen and ascended Jesus. And this is a very different form of power. It's a different sort of power. Power as weakness, power in suffering. Ultimately, the power of the cross. Whatever we may suffer, including whatever any effects of the coronavirus, Christ redeems our suffering. What a benefit to know this. What a benefit in this life to know that Jesus will redeem our suffering, especially so when it comes to a time like this where so much human weakness is revealed by the virus. But that's not the most significant benefit we receive from Jesus' ascension, our mission, purpose, and power in this life. We come now to how Jesus' ascension provides us eternal benefits. And this, I think, is the most important part of today's message. So listen to the amazing benefit Jesus' ascension offers to believers. It means God honors human bodies like yours and mine. God honors human bodies. Now, ancient theologians like to refer to this, they like to refer to our flesh in heaven. By that, they meant Jesus' human body on the throne of God. Because this proves that humanity can exist in heaven in the direct presence of God. It is possible, it will be possible for us one day to see God face to face. In the Old Testament, no one could look at God's face and live. But now, with the human body of Jesus on God's throne, seated on the throne of heaven, we can live with God forever. This is what Jesus promises in our gospel reading from John chapter 14. I will come back and take you. Where will he take us? Where is he coming back from? He is ascended and seated at the throne of God. Jesus says, I will come back and I will take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. At the throne of God, the control center of the universe. When Jesus ascended, he left us, but not in order to relax on vacation and stop thinking about all of us struggling down here on earth in this life. No, Jesus said, I'm going because I got a purpose. I'm going to prepare a place for you. The ascension means God values and honors our body. He has been working, God has been working for 2,000 years to prepare a place where our bodies can exist with him. It means that our spiritual bodies, like the one that Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven in or with, these spiritual bodies... They will last forever because God sustains them. Now, in contrast, these mortal earthly bodies we now possess, recall that even Jesus' mortal body died on the cross. His earthly body died like ours will. Now, what an amazing lesson this brings home. Your body is valuable to God. So why don't you treat it that way? God the Son honored the human body by taking one for himself. That's what Christmas is all about. This is the blessing, the, the, the miracle of Christmas. 
And Jesus will forevermore possess that same human body that was born of Mary at Christmas. When Jesus returns, God's messengers, those two angels in Acts chapter 1, they inform us that same body, this same Jesus is coming back. Not some other Jesus, but the same body, the same Jesus that ascended will one day descend again to judge the earth. Now, let's wrap up, let's wrap, let, let's wrap up topic number two, the coronavirus. It tragically reveals how frail we are, these bodies that we live in, how easily they can be killed. We are creatures of the earth and not eternal. In another good thing resulting from the virus, we learn to appreciate being joined to Jesus, his eternal spiritual human body. When Jesus returns, we will fly to Jesus, not in these earthly bodies that perish, but in bodies filled with the Spirit, in new spiritual bodies. We become eternal heavenly beings. Now, briefly, we've only got a little bit of time for our third topic today. What does Jesus' ascension mean for everything else, the rest of creation? It means restoration. We are redeemed from our sins, but our sin, it has damaged the rest of the creation. We have, by our sin, we have left God's creation injured, damaged. It needs to be restored. So the whole creation, it, it longs to be restored to its original Edenic state. In its restored state, all creation will now be able to fully honor God and submit completely to his authority. The ascension means that Jesus' life on earth, his crucifixion, his resurrection, and ultimately his return, is not, it's not just about our salvation. It's also about the transformation of the whole universe, restoring all things to their proper order, which was disrupted by our sin. Making all things new and good and right starts with Jesus' resurrection body that has now ascended to heavenly glory. Our redemption and the restoration of the whole creation means instead of fighting against creation, we will live in harmony with it. Wonderful, miraculous. The Old Testament prophet, he foresaw this new creation and reports on it in chapter 11 of his book. It's often referred to as Isaiah's vision of the peaceable kingdom. You're probably familiar with the passage where the lion lies down with the lamb and both live in peace. How beautiful. Consider this truth in light of our fight against the coronavirus. We will one day, when the creation is restored, we will live in harmony with that renewed world. It will not create viruses that attack us. Viruses will be gone. We will not suffer them forever. Hallelujah. Now for a final spiritual lesson. Jesus' ascension teaches us that this world, this creation, is not our final home. We find our true and final home in another place, a place Jesus is busy creating right now. He's preparing. Whatever happens to me in this world, think about what Jesus' ascension and the, the restoration of creation means, the renewal of our lives in spiritual bodies. Whatever happens to me in this world, it cannot touch 
my spiritual body. It cannot destroy my heavenly home. Believing this spiritual truth, we can live fearlessly, even courageously, no matter what the, the virus does to us or, or any other trouble that happens in this world that comes our way. So to, to summarize, the ascension of Jesus means not that Jesus abandons the world. On the contrary, it means he redeems and restores the entire creation. When Jesus returns, he will complete his work, the final judgment and the restoration of the universe. When all things are made new, as we read in today's call to worship from Revelation chapter 21. For us, the ascension means we are redeemed and receive new spiritual bodies that will live forever. So in conclusion, what precisely is the significance of the bodily ascension of Jesus? Excuse me. Its significance is that in his body, Jesus not only died for our sins and rose again, but because Jesus, is, Jesus ascended into heaven, we too will rise and we will live in a restored world. We will rise to that restored world where every tear is wiped away, where there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. That is the beautiful message of Jesus' ascension, that we will join our human bodies with his human body in the place where all things have made, been made new and there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Friends, listen again to Jesus speaking to us from John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Well, those are surely words we need to hear this day. In my father's house, Jesus continued, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Well, that's the ascension. Jesus has now gone to prepare that place. And Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Jesus will return. And I will take you to be with me in that place where we live forever in peace so that we will be with Jesus forever. This ascended Jesus, he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. This Jesus is your Savior. Trust him, love him, worship him, today and forevermore. Amen.